Hi guys, the eruption still keeps going. So we have still the two larger craters where most of the lava is going to be spilled out. And then there's several smaller craters. So it used to be like between seven and eight craters. And it basically still basically looks like the same. The lava is still flowing and it is threatening to get over the defense walls in Grindavik. That's why they have decided to make those walls higher. The air pollution is the biggest problem at the moment, in my opinion, and it's already like flowing, not flowing, maybe like being blown towards the capital area and uh, a town that is getting it quite heavily is the town of Höfen. So that is an Icelandic fishing town and that is on the southeastern part of the country. So that town is getting quite a bit of pollution at the moment. The gas pollution has high values in Höfen because of that volcanic eruption in the Sutnuka crater series and it's been going on for quite a while. So there are about 2200 micrograms per cubic meter in the air and the pollution, that pollution is quite unhealthy for the vulnerable population but also for the elderly or people with underlying respiratory diseases. Um, so it's not really good. It is a dangerous pollution that's coming from that eruption. And that's why the authorities are saying we need to monitor this closely. And as you remember, uh, I put the video in the end screen, there was an employee of the Blue Lagoon that's in the Swartzengi area in direct proximity to the eruption. A few days ago, that worker was on a backhoe and was working outside in the area of the Blue Lagoon when he suddenly became respiratory issues. Um, it was hard for him to breathe and then they found out that he was exposed to toxic gas pollution and he had to be hospitalized and thankfully Eddie <laughs> that's my Westie dog in case you don't know that I have three and whenever I'm starting to make a video he does this so that's why the authorities are saying that they need to pay much attention, close attention to where the gas pollution is being blown into. So the most pollution, of course, we have at the eruption craters, right at the eruption site. And that's why heavy gas pollution was measured in Grindavik last night. And it went up to 9,000 micrograms per cubic meter. And yesterday, the police chief of Sudurns has said he doesn't want anybody in these areas. The Blue Lagoon area, Grindavik, um, basically in every area that's on that hazard map of the um, Icelandic Metrological Office, because of course, this is closest to the eruption and of course closest to the pollution and the lava flow that also still gassing out something. So of course it's always greatest and this was also the case um, yesterday in, in uh, Iceland that the pollution was the greatest in the vicinity of the eruption but it has then moved later on straight into Grindavik and then out of the country. We know it has blown into Europe as well. It's been in the UK, Poland and the Nordic countries as well. So magma is still also still filling up their gravel pit in Melholznama. And uh, then you can also still see that that lava tongue is moving towards uh, Grindavik Ovigua and Grindavik um, as a whole. So overall, what the civil defense is saying is that they really want to warn the residents of the whole Rakhianis Peninsula to pay close attention to the air quality in their area. Um, but as I said at the beginning, most of the pollution has been directed to the fishing town of Höfen today. So they have recommended to the residents of that town and in the area around it that they would close their windows and turn off any air systems, air conditioning systems, um, and let them monitor the air quality and that they would monitor the air quality by themselves as well on the website loftgetty.is, which always has the accurate um, recent information. So 
this has been going on for the last few days. So the air pollution, there was always air pollution on the Reykjanes Peninsula. And that's why it's so important after the incident at the Blue Lagoon that the residents themselves pay close attention and really watch what's going on. Because this is, these are ashes from the eruption and sulfur dioxide. And this can cause in people drowsiness, headaches, eye and throat irritation, and also respiratory symptoms. But the problem is if you have very, very small particles, they can get through your system and they can pass right away into your lungs and cause damage there and really manifest themselves in your lungs. And that is really dangerous. And of that volcanic smog that they have there, the smallest particles are PM1 and 2.5. And that is dangerous because they can reach the lungs. Um, I know pretty much about that because I have done a lot of um, research since you know I have horses and that's part of my business into modern footings in equestrian outdoor and especially in indoor arenas because a lot of silica sand is used that is quite fine at some times and then it's mixed with other stuff like fibers it used to be wood chips but some of that sand you know you you're riding a horse in there the horse has the nose closer to the ground but of course these footings need to be watered and kept moist but there is still sand and dust coming up into the air and some of these particles in silica sand they can reach your lungs and uh it's quite dangerous in my opinion that's why i've always paid attention to that um so yeah that's the same with these volcanic ashes and with this air pollution that's coming from the volcano so that is not ideal because if it's blowing on the reykjanes peninsula that's where a lot of tourists are coming in there's the Keflavik airport of course there's the capital there's Reykjavik and speaking of tourists it seems that the country of Iceland is quite concerned about their next tourist season I mean they always say April is quite slow because of Easter it's it's more that people in Iceland are traveling abroad during that time and we know I mean if you know my channel and if you watched my videos I've always talked about their grave concerns about their tourism industry which is understandable because it's a it's a huge part of how Iceland makes its money right and that's why you know in my opinion they keep that blue lagoon always open until the last minute so that they have to have one emergency evacuation after the other. And you know that I'm not in favor of that because I think it's okay to have a big tourism industry, but you should also care for the safety of your tourists more, even if there wasn't a direct lava flow into the Blue Lagoon. It was getting pretty close and the chances are not zero that something could happen in that area. But putting people through middle of the night sirens red skies emergency evacuations you've seen the video that was posted in the icelandic newspaper mbl where that woman filmed herself with a panic face running out of that blue lagoon building complex waking up in the middle of the night so it seems uh, that there are less bookings right now but you know this could have several reasons and they have blamed it on international reporting news that we're reporting about the eruptions and earthquakes that have happened on the peninsula since november 10th so they're saying could have several reasons there was a boom after covid when people finally were allowed to travel again and were able to spend the funds that they have had saved during covid because nobody could go anywhere so they had a little bit of a boom and it seems that has died down but they're also blaming it on tv stations and one of their tourist guys has said well I can't really call CNN and tell them to change their narrative um, I have to say I mean you guys you keep telling me there isn't much in the news in your countries and many people didn't even know about it and I've read the comments many people that were in the Blue Lagoon they didn't know about it the Blue Lagoon is not promoting what's going on on their website so basically you can do a booking without really knowing and many have written me from different countries saying we didn't know we weren't aware 
right? So it's not, in my opinion, that this news has spread worldwide and I haven't seen any news of anyone saying, don't go to Iceland, don't go, it's dangerous or anything. I have heard anyone say, and I think that's the truth, I mean, stay away from this area right now. Stay away from the Swartzangi area where this magma chamber is right underneath and stay away from the surrounding areas where it could erupt and could cause these toxic gases and lava flows and etc. So before this eruption, the air pollution wasn't really a big uh, problem. But now since this eruption has been going on for so long, um, it is becoming a bigger problem. The, the last eruptions had died down after a few hours, a day and a half, something like that. So it wasn't a big concern and wouldn't impact any tourists. I mean, you can fly to Keflavik, you could do sightseeing in, in Reykjavik, go to other nice um, lagoons and stuff like that. Um, is this affecting bookings? They say there are less bookings, um, but I think this has to be determined because of inflation and it's very expensive. So that all might reasons. So I don't think uh, that the international press is to blame for that. Let me know, have you seen really negative articles that said, don't go to Iceland? Um, you know, for me, I have never said don't go to Iceland. My opinion is don't go to the Blue Lagoon. You don't need to do that. Go somewhere else. But the rest of Iceland is fairly safe. I mean, they always have some avalanche risk in the winter and some just a few days ago, there was avalanche warning in other areas and stuff like this. But you know that you also have that if you go to some ski resorts in the Alps or France or Austria, whatever, this can always happen. So you always have to be aware of where you are a little bit, right? You can't just go there and be completely uninformed. I mean, Iceland is the country of fire and ice. I mean, that at least people should know if you go there. But uh, yeah, let me know your thoughts, guys. Uh, is anything influencing you? What do you say? Um, would be interesting to know. And uh, probably I'll release another update um, with a little bit of interesting history uh, in a few hours and uh, until then guys if you're new here hi welcome it would be awesome if you could subscribe and for all of you please leave this video a like that would be absolutely great and I hope to see you very soon and if you're bored in the meantime check out the videos in the end screen guys I'm out of here the weather is finally nice and sunny and warm and I have to take advantage of that to get some of my stuff going because my two seniors Royal and Sambrino, um, I usually didn't need much electricity in their fences. I had none, right? Um, but they have discovered that you can just break through these poly tapes and now they're wandering all over the farm and they're breaking through it. So um, I have to move one of my solar chargers and build, build their pasture. And uh, I guess they will have to touch it to feel a little bit that you should not just push through all my fences and then walk around around to the mares, to the girls, and then they are starting to make their noise. And uh, yeah, so that's probably what I'm doing after I am done filming with this video. Fence building. And uh, you guys, I hope you're having a great morning, afternoon, or evening. I just finished most of my coffee. It's, it's badly needed. So thank you guys for all the coffees. You keep buying me on buymeacoffee.com and for the supers and for all your support. You guys are awesome. See you soon. Bye-bye.